His wife had just died, but he looked so calm and not a bit sad. He just walks out the door and wipes the blood off his shoes. He even felt a little hungry so, he went to the vending machine to buy something. Unfortunately, the chocolate got stuck and couldn't fall out. Davis made a crying face in the mirror at his wife's funeral, but he couldn't cry. Did he not love his wife at all? When Davis got home, he opened the refrigerator and saw the sticky notes his wife had put up as his Saturday at the table to eat. He thought of his wife's smile as she served the food, but he still wasn't touched at all. The next day, he woke up at 5.30 to catch the 7.15 subway to work. Just like before, his colleagues at work were stunned to see him. They said things to comfort Davis, but he went back to work as if nothing bad had happened. His boss is his wife's father. He felt something was wrong with Davis and wanted to talk to him. But Davis refuses to talk to him and remains distracted. He told a passerby on his way back that he didn't love his wife because he didn't feel any sadness. Even after his wife passed away, the passerby asked him how he felt about that. Davis suddenly pulled down that emergency brake valve. Davis stopped the train and went to the police station. But what he did was unbelievable. His parents, who were comforting him, were going on. Davis dropped them off and spent half an hour at the airport watching people hauling their luggage and walking around in a hurry. It made him curious to start noticing everything around him. He opened the refrigerator at home again and noticed the water leak his wife had told him about. He also remembered that his wife said a toolbox. So he dug out the toolbox. His father-in-law once reassured him that if you want to fix something, you have to dismantle all the parts first and find the important points. In the end, he took the refrigerator apart. Even the company bathroom door and the office computer were dismantled by Davis. He became a monster in the eyes of everyone. He had no one to talk to and even wrote a letter of complaint to the vending machine company. His letter contained no insults, no reprimands, just the story of him and his wife. They met at a party. Julia is a kind person. Her job was to take care of children with special needs. They were soon married but couldn't spend their lives together forever. One day at in the middle of the night, he got a phone call. The customer service agent at the vending machine company read Davis' letter and cried. She asked Davis if he had found someone to talk to, but she realized the call was untimely and quickly hung up. A few days later Davis was on a train and noticed a woman not far from him staring at him, so he went to say hello to her. The woman had a unique quality that drew Davis to her. But soon, the woman got off the train. Davis picked up a magazine that she had left behind. He discovered that this woman, Karen, was the customer service agent who had read his letters. The man is an investor who begs the contractor to let him join the demolition crew. He didn't need a salary and even paid $50. The contractor is incredulous and refuses. Instead, he paid $141 and said he would work hard. Finally, Davis was able to take a hammer and bang on the siding with abandon. He was working harder than the workers. The workers thought Davis, who paid to work, was the odd man out. Karen was amused when she read this part in his letter. A few days ago, Davis found out she was following him then he followed her back to her house. Karen's boyfriend was home at the time. Karen awkwardly asked her boyfriend to leave. Davis then gave Karen the letter he had just written. Just today he was suspended from his job because of his bizarre behavior. He spent his days at home with nothing to do. One night, Karen found Davis. Her boyfriend was away on business and thought she'd stop by and see him. She said Davis' house was Kelsey. Davis, however, said he hated the house. Perhaps it was the absence of his wife that made him feel empty. Karen took Davis back to her house. They just lay in the same room onto beds and talked. They were more like soulmates. When Karen took Davis shopping, Davis saw a broken down carousel. It was strange that he wanted to fix it after all the stuff he took apart. Then they went to the beach. Davis let go of all his worries and played without any restrictions. He and Karen were like a spiritual support for each other when they were together. But in a trance, he seems to see his wife. He couldn't tell for a moment if it was a dream or reality. When he got home, he showered and saw his wife again in the mirror. Then he stumbled and sat her on the toilet. His wife had been dead for a long time, but this was the first time he cried out in pain. Davis accidentally stepped on a nail while working on the construction site again. Oh, God damn that fucking hurt! Whoa! Shit, yeah! Everyone around him looked at him in amazement. Davis took a bath at night and felt better than ever before looking at the blood and water. Karen has a son. Davis talks to the boy when he's at their house. The boy was upset with Davis at first. The boy grew to accept Davis when he found out his wife had passed away 
and that he and his mother were just close friends. He would show Davis the war in a funny way and would go shopping with Davis at the supermarket. Davis taught him how to use a gun. The man put on a bulletproof undershirt and let people shoot him. The bullets hurt when they hit him, but... Davis also went to the supermarket to buy some tools and then took the boy back to his villa. He swung a hammer and slammed the table. <coughs> the two of them smashed the cottage to pieces. There was not a single spot in the house that was intact. The boy lifts the corners of Davis's mouth upward as he sits on the steps and tells him to cheer up. But in reality, Davis had lost his wife less than a month ago. He danced around Karen's house while the boy played music. At dusk, he asked the boy to download songs for him and then dance back home to the music. No one who saw him could have guessed that he had just lost his wife. A few days later Davis hired a construction crew with a bulldozer to tear down the house. He went into the bedroom, the last undamaged part of the house. As he swung the hammer at the dresser, a piece of paper came floating down. It was a checklist for his wife's pregnancy from last year. Davis' hands trembled slightly because he had no idea she was pregnant last year. As he walks the boy home, the sun stains his eyes. Davis lowered his visor and saw a sticky note taped to the top of the visor. He rips it off in annoyance and tosses it aside. At night, Davis shaves off his beard. It's the first time he's been seriously dressed since his wife's funeral. Tonight is a reception his father-in-law is hosting in his wife's name. His father-in-law has put all of his wife's assets in a foundation to support deserving underprivileged students. His father-in-law was furious when he saw Davis with Karen. He couldn't believe Davis had the audacity to bring another woman here tonight. Davis didn't say a word but silently gave the signed papers to his father-in-law. But after the presentation, he suddenly asked his parents if they knew about his wife's pregnancy. Davis doesn't understand why his wife didn't tell him the news. His mother-in-law caught up with Davis, who was walking away. She said it wasn't Davis, Beatty. She was the one who took her daughter to have the abortion in the first place. The father-in-law looked at them in shock. The father-in-law obviously didn't know about it. Davis arrived at Karen's house to find that her boyfriend had returned and was beaten up. Davis knew that his friendship with Karen was over. When it was all over, Davis went to his wife's grave. A short time later, a man walks in with flowers. He was the driver of the car that killed Davis' wife. Davis looked at him and didn't know what to say. He didn't seem to resent the driver either. Davis went back to his car and picked up the sticky note. The sticky note said, if the sky is sunny, you think of me. His wife put the sticky notes where he could see them. He suddenly smiled because he remembered the sticky note in the refrigerator and he remembered the conversation he had with his wife before the accident. He remembered what the two of them had been through together. Davis smiled and laughed and shed tears. Then he found his father-in-law and offered to do something for his wife. He fixed the merry-go-round for the special children that his wife had cared for most. Right then and there, Davis had a real smile on his face. The film, Demolition, was released in 2015. Sometimes we are so sad that we can't cry. Does Davis love his wife? He sure did. When he loses her, he's a walking corpse. But when he knew his wife loved him too, he couldn't stop crying. At that moment, he was truly relieved. He also truly regretted and regretted that he had missed his wife. Although the love of his life had passed away, his broken life had to go on. We have all learned how to actually love someone.